Hey, it's Justin Brown here from Primal Video. Recently we did a video talking about the best camera apps on iPhone, and we narrowed it down to three. They were Filmic Pro, Movie Pro, and Kinematic. So in this video, we're gonna take a look at Movie Pro and walk you through step-by-step step the best settings, or the settings, to get the best results out of your videos. Now it's important to note here that this video isn't gonna be a full review. It's also not gonna cover every feature or every setting in the app. But what it will do is take you through step-by-step step how to set up and get great results using Movie Pro. Now, before we jump into it, the main reason that you wanna be using one of these third-party camera apps or aftermarket camera apps for your videos is so that you can lock everything down, so that you're taking that automatic adjustment that may happen during your videos out of the picture. So you're literally locking down things like your exposure, like your color temperature, uh, like your autofocus, so that nothing will change and everything will stay the way that you want it to instead of how the camera thinks it should look. So that's really powerful. But not only that, it will allow you to get the best quality picture out of your phone camera. So we're gonna take you through the process of setting that up now. All right, so we're here in Movie Pro. The first place to start to lock down your settings and get everything set up right is in the settings. So we'll open up settings. And here you've actually got the ability to set presets. So if you're gonna be filming in different locations, you can create presets for different filming styles or different resolutions to match different locations. So we'll just leave it on preset one and we'll get that set up for this location. So we're gonna start off with then with our resolution. So the quality of the video that we're gonna be recording. Now in resolution, you've got heaps of options here for video resolutions to record at. Where I'd recommend that you start is under basic resolutions and it's going to pick the highest quality record setting for your phone in under basic resolutions. So I'm currently using an iPhone 6, which has native recording capability of 1080p, so 1920 by 1080. If you're using one of the newer phones that supports 4K, then pick 4K here in this option. So I'd always recommend to pick the highest quality native resolution for the camera that you've got. So even though there's other higher resolutions we can pick down here, our camera doesn't natively support these resolutions, so I personally wouldn't recommend them. So we'll leave our set to 1080p here. And we'll come back up here, settings. Next up, we need to lock down our frame rate. So we'll click on frame rate. And you can see in here, we've got a heap of different frame rates to choose from. Now the two most common or most popular frame rates will be 25 frames per second or 30 frames per second. Now you pick 25 if you're in Australia or in the UK, and you'll pick 30 if you're in the US. Now you wanna make sure that you're picking the right frame rate for your region so that there's a lot less chance of having things like strobing or flickering coming into your recorded videos. So if you're in Australia or the UK, pick 25. If you're in the US, pick 30. Now there are other frame rates here, higher frame rates that you can pick as well. If you're looking to do some smooth 60p or 50p video recording, then you've got those options there of 50 or 60, or anything above that is classed as slow motion and different degrees of slow motion. So 96 right up to 240 are all slow motion frame rates. So if you're after slow motion, then this is where you pick them. But I'm in Australia, so I'll pick 25. Next up, we've got the video quality. So we'll pick on that one. It's automatically selected 225% for us which is saying 225% corresponds to 50 megabits per second as a bit rate. So how bit rates work is the higher the bit rate, the higher the quality of the video that you're recording, the larger the file size. So it says here that the iPhone normally shoots at around 22 megabits per second. So this app lets us record at a higher quality or higher bit rate of 50 megabits per second. So if you're looking to create a smaller file size, I would recommend choosing 100% as the lowest. Don't drop your quality below 100%. If you've got the storage capacity in your phone and you wanna record at a higher quality level, then pick at least 225% so that you're recording at 50 megabits per second. And really, that's where I feel that most people should be setting their cameras to. So we'll go back now. And next, we're gonna lock down our audio. So if we click on that, now the first option that you should pick here is either 44.1 kilohertz or 48 kilohertz for your videos. Most people won't be able to tell the difference between the two, but in my opinion, you're better off setting this to 48 kilohertz. 
So once you've picked your kilohertz, then we can come up and pick the quality of the audio that we're recording. So you get the choice of silent or no audio, low quality, medium quality, normal quality, or uncompressed. Now uncompressed will give you a much, much larger file size. And personally, I think it's a bit of overkill for any video that you're gonna be creating with your iPhone. So I would suggest that you leave it as normal. We'll go back now. Now you've also got the option in here to turn on or off video stabilization. Now if you're going to be walking around or if there's going to be movement in your shot, then I would suggest that you turn on video stabilization. If you're going to be recording with your phone on a tripod, then I would suggest that you leave this off. Now if we come down here through the settings here, we've got some audio options that we're going to adjust next. So your built-in microphone is just normally set to auto, which is where I'd recommend that you leave it. But you can also manually select to use the bottom microphone or the front top microphone, depending on which microphone you'd like to record from, if you're just going to be using the inbuilt microphones in the phone. So we'll come back out of that. So I suggest you leave that to auto unless you specifically would like to pick. Next up, if you're using a Bluetooth microphone, then you can enable or disable this feature here. We won't be, so we'll disable that feature. Audio metering is a setting that I would recommend you turn on. This will show you your audio bars and show you your, as it says there, your audio signal strength to show you how loud or quiet your audio is in your recording. The last setting that you really wanna check in here is the record duration. You wanna make sure that it's set to unlimited so that you're not getting halfway through a video and hitting a limit that you might've accidentally set of maybe five minutes where your recording will stop at that point. So make sure that your record duration is set to unlimited. Now there are quite a few other features in here, so feel free to come in and have a play, but all of the ones that we've run through are the critical ones that you need to get right for best results. So we'll hit done now we'll come back and actually set up our shot. And we can see our audio bars there on the left. We can see that our audio is coming in and you can see that it's not peaking, it's not hitting red. So the audio levels are pretty good. Now, if we do want to adjust our audio levels and make them louder, then we can come up here to the microphone and we can slide up and down to adjust the volume and make it louder or quieter. Okay, so now we're gonna lock down our brightness or our exposure of the shot. So we'll come down here to the middle one and press on our exposure. And you can see that it's currently set to auto exposure. So we've got a couple of settings in here that we can change. The first should be your shutter. And here it's automatically set to one over 25. So where I'd recommend you set this is to one over 50 if you're in Australia or the UK, or one over 60 if you're in the US. And again, this is to match the lights in your area, to match the flickering in your area, so that you're going to eliminate or reduce the chance of having any flickering or a strobing coming through in your videos. So set this first before we adjust the rest of the brightness in the shot. So one over 50 if you're in Australia or the UK, or one over 60 if you're in the US. Now, if you do need to make your shot darker, you can also set this to a multiple of that number, so double that number. So in Australia and UK, it can be one over 100, or in the US, it can be one over 120. Now being a multiple of that number will still match the frequency so that you won't get any strobing or flickering in your videos. So once you've locked down your shutter, we'll come back over here to ISO, and this is where we'll adjust the brightness or the darkness of our shot. So the higher the number here, the brighter the shot, the lower the number, the darker the shot. So for us here and this shot, I'll probably say around 100 or 110 will be where we want the brightness for this scene. So lock down your shutter and then brighten or darken your shot using your ISO. Now, if you are filming outside in really bright conditions and you've got your ISO right down to the darkest that you can for your phone, so 30 in this case, and the shot is still really bright, then you can darken your shot by coming back to the shutter and increasing the shutter. Now, especially if you're filming outside and you're not using any additional lights that may produce flickering, then you can really set your shutter speed to any number in order to get the brightness right for your shot. But if you're indoors and you're using lights, then that's where it's important to stick to the correct numbers for your region. So I'll set this back to 50 here now. We'll come back over to ISO and we'll brighten that back up to around 100. So that's looking pretty good. So once we're happy with those, we can lock those settings down by pressing AEL or exposure lock. 
All right, so that's our exposure locked down. Next up, we want to adjust our white balance. So we click on the white balance down here. You can see it's currently on auto. So white balance is the color temperature of the video we're recording. So normally a good place to start to lock down the white balance is with the auto. You can see it's automatically picked something that looks pretty good. If you want to lock that so that it's not going to change in your shot while you're recording, then you'll just want to press the auto white balance lock and then we're locked in at that setting. If you wanna customize it and really refine the look of your shot, then you can come across to temperature and you can adjust the number here. You can see we're at 4,800 Kelvin and we can use this slider to adjust the look that we're getting for our videos by changing the numbers here on screen. So that's locking down your white balance. Next up, we need to lock down our focus point. So if we come down the bottom left here to focus, you can see that we're currently on autofocus. So the easiest way to lock down your autofocus is to tap on the screen on the area that you wanna focus on, and the phone will adjust, and then press AFL, which will lock the autofocus at that point. Now, if you wanna manually adjust the autofocus beyond that point, you can click on manual, and with this slider here, you can drag back and forth to get the focus that you're after. So those are all the settings that you need to lock down in order to get the best results with this app. Now, before you actually jump in and record your videos, it's a good idea to record a short test, 15 to 20 seconds, come back, play it back, and make sure that the audio and the video are exactly how you want them before you go and record your full videos. So there you have it. That's how you can set up Movie Pro on iOS for recording your videos. If you haven't hit that big subscribe button yet, then make sure you do. Give this video a thumbs up if you found it helpful. And linked on screen now is another video taking you through step-by-step -step how to film professional videos on iPhone. I'll see you soon.